DFW's Business Authority, 1160 AM, KVCE. The information provided during this broadcast belongs to the show host and is for general informational purposes only. Nothing that is discussed or taken as legal advice for any individual case or situation. This information does not and is not intended to create an attorney-client relationship, nor does receipt of or listening to the information provided constitute an attorney-client relationship. Welcome to the Believers in Business Hour on KVCE AM 1160. It's time for Bar Talk with local trial lawyer Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Stay tuned, get informed, and get educated about your legal rights when you or a loved one have been seriously injured or harmed by the conduct of someone else or at the hands of an insurance company. Brad Parker has focused his law practice exclusively on trial work since becoming licensed in 1985 and is board certified in personal injury trial law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. And now, here's Bar Talk with Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to Bar Talk. I'm Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Gosh, there's been a lot going on this week. Uh, We're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. I encourage you to call in and visit with me if you want to. Uh, The number here is uh, 214-787-1160. If you've got a legal issue or question you want answered, uh, give me a call. I'll try my very best to, to answer it for you or provide you a source of uh, information that maybe can provide the answer if I can't. And likewise, if you are driving around, don't get on your phone and want to call me uh, during business hours, feel free to give me a call at my office. Uh, I'm always happy to visit with you and provide a free consultation over the phone or in person if need be. My number at the office is 817-503-9200. That's 817-503-9200. Or, of course, you can always get me on by email. Uh, my website is parkerlawfirm.com or email me at brad at parkerlawfirm.com. Be happy to visit with you. And if I can't help you, I'm certainly going to try my very best to, to find someone who can. Well, uh, I guess the, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the uh, Ebola scare. Uh, we just heard a little bit about that uh, in the news coming into this program. You know, yesterday uh, the diagnosis, I guess, uh, had been made and the press conference was held. And uh, we all learned about the Ebola uh, problem uh, that happened in Dallas, uh, the quarantine of the, of the individual. But, you know, as I heard more and more reports, and I think all of us were asking, uh, number one, let's don't get panicked uh, unless you've been in contact with this individual and shared a bodily fluid with him, uh, there's not much chance of you, little zero chance of you getting Ebola. But uh, uh, what really piqued my curiosity as a lawyer and how the legal system is going to maybe interplay with this was why did the hospital let him go? Um, I, I, I don't understand that at the very beginning. Uh, you've got the president who's been talking almost daily on national TV about the Ebola outbreak, about all that we're doing, uh, trying to get our uh, friends and neighboring countries to assist us with the, the epidemic that is going on in, in West Africa. And here you have a gentleman who has just arrived from West Africa, uh, checking into a hospital, uh, has all the symptoms of Ebola, and they just turn him loose on the streets. And you wonder, what in the world broke down there? And as you heard on the news, I, I hadn't heard this part yet until just a moment ago. And that is that he actually told the hospital, hey, I just got back from, you know, Ebola ravaged West Africa. And I'm having some symptoms here. And it wasn't uh, two days later before he's back in the hospital after they release him. So I guess as a, as a lawyer, and as I was leaving my office tonight, I, I happened to look at the Internet and the Texas Lawyer, uh, a newspaper publication uh, for, for lawyers, uh, has an uh, Internet story out about the legal ramifications of this and what, if any, liability the hospital may have. And, you know, when you, when you expose the community to such a devastating potential disease uh, by failing to exercise the proper protocols 
uh, because I suspect that we're going to learn that uh, they failed in every respect. Uh, and th- th- in a normal situation, this, this gentleman should have been quarantined on his first visit, not his second. Obviously, it's second as well, but on his first visit, should never been a second visit. So what rights would those ambulance drivers, for instance, have for being exposed to this man uh, unnecessarily? because of the negligence or the neglect or the failure of the hospital to follow appropriate protocol in the first instance. Uh, what, what if somebody else, God forbid, should uh, come down with the, with the disease uh, because of that two-day uh, instance where this man was allowed to travel the streets of Dallas, Texas and interact with the other citizens here? Uh, should the hospital be accountable? Should the hospital be responsible? Uh, my my statement would be absolutely unequivocally they should be. Uh, as I as I say, uh, I suspect we're going to find that they failed to follow protocol in a number of different instances. I'm no question in my mind they're doing everything they can do right now or doing a fine job of it. I hope, but what they failed to do in the first instance, it appears at least on initial blush, uh, they failed miserably uh, to follow what we call the standard of care. And if they did, uh, what's their liability? Uh, if, if a jury should agree uh, that someone who, who gets sick and they wind up suing the hospital, what, what, what's the ramification to the hospital? What, what's going to be the end game with the hospital? And uh, many of you may have tuned in to my show a couple of weeks ago where we had uh, a local prominent medical malpractice attorney, Jim Gerards, on the show talking about the uh, case up in Plano uh, with Dr. Dunch, the uh, cocaine-taking physician, surgeon who operated on folks, killed a couple of people, maimed a few others, uh, including his roommate and best friend, apparently, who also may have been his drug dealer. And all the while, the hospital let this go on. But if you recall that show, uh, you learned, and uh, Jim told us about, how the hospital's liability in these situations is extremely limited uh, and they have a heightened degree of standard of proof in which you have to overcome in order to attach liability and even if you can get there with the with the evidence and the proof and the standard of care and the heightened degree uh, you're, you're capped in essence at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on non-economic damages so let's assume that a uh, uh, your wife, uh, a, a, a caretaker of the home who works doesn't work outside the home, uh, was inadvertently exposed to this man during that two day period. Uh, however, it happened, and she comes down with Ebola. Uh, my interpretation of the law would be that you're capped at two hundred fifty thousand dollars because she's not going to have much of an economic loss. Although we can argue how that that can be, but the bottom line is, this is probably about a $250,000 case, according to Texas law. And uh, that's what Jim and I talked about at length, was the the unfairness of uh, tort reform on the innocent. Uh, We have thrown the baby out with the bathwater, especially when it comes to medical malpractice and holding health care providers accountable for their failures. I promise you, if you run a stop sign and hit the same hypothetical woman, the caretaker, uh, uh, wife, spouse, caretaker, homemaker, uh, you run into her, uh, after you run a stop sign, uh, you will be held fully accountable. There will be no cap whatsoever on the amount of damages that could be assessed against you. Uh, but, but because they are a health care professional or health care provider, as the legal term goes, uh, they get this special protection that nobody else in this state uh, gets or enjoys, just the health care providers, doctors, nurses, dentists, hospitals, uh, uh, all that. So I, I hope this gives everybody an opportunity to reflect on uh, just how draconian tort reform has been, uh, how it can, uh, you know, just if you don't have financial responsibility, and you don't have financial uh, culpability and liability for your misdeeds and misconduct, what is to hold you to 
performing as a reasonably prudent hospital or doctor or driver, for that matter, uh, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, you can be held responsible. And uh, when you take away the financial accountability, especially of a corporation, uh, of an institution, then you don't have in place those motivating factors that corporations only understand, and that is the pocketbook. Uh, juries routinely hear these kinds of cases, routinely uh, try to compensate uh, people accordingly. Uh, but when you have a cap, a constitutionally imposed cap, on these kinds of damages, all you've done is harmed yourself, harmed your neighbors, harmed your loved ones. Uh, so uh, it can have a devastating, devastating effect. We're fixing to go to break. When I come back, I want to talk about a couple other little headlines, uh, news in the headlines, including the Jerry Jones update. And then I want to focus uh, a little bit more on why, why is Texas experiencing a 51% increase in trucking fatalities? Uh, we'll talk about all of that after the break. This is Bar Talk. I'm Brad Parker. Sixty AM KVCE KVCE Dallas Fort Worth's Business Authority. Hey, golf fans! This is Tom Keys, co-host of the Golf Grape and Grub Show, inviting you to join Pam Wood and myself as we expand the exploration of golf to food and wine. With the 19th hole in mind, we will talk with chefs, winemakers, and all things fun. We will feature behind-the-scenes interviews with caddies, announcers, instructors, fitness folks, course designers, club makers, fashion makers, and more. So join us every Saturday noon to 1 p.m. on 11:60 a.m. You can also catch Catch us online at kvceradio.com. The Golf Grape and Grub Show, Saturday, noon to 1 p.m. on KVCE. Tune in weekday mornings at 9 for the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Join us each weekday when we discuss the principles and practices of the successful real estate investor. We bring you experts to answer your questions on how to use real estate to build wealth and passive realized monthly income and teach you the ins and outs of investing in real estate. So tune in weekday mornings at 9, right here for the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. We have an unwavering commitment to people who have been seriously harmed by the negligence or wrongdoing of others. Our practice focuses on those who have been killed or seriously injured in major trucking or car accidents or whose lives have been seriously disrupted by the bad faith conduct of an insurance company. Hi, I'm Brad Parker, Principal Partner at Parker Law Firm. I'm board certified in personal injury trial law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. I'm also the immediate past president of the Texas Trial Lawyers Association. When you or a loved one has been seriously injured in an accident caused by another person's negligence, you may not know where to go or who to trust. Our firm is built on years of trial experience, our tradition of personal service, and a reputation for zealous representation of our clients. We're dedicated to providing experienced and comprehensive legal assistance to individuals and their families during their times of need. Let the attorneys from Parker Law Firm help you. Get a free consultation. Call 817-503-9200. ParkerLawFirm.com. Principal Office, Bedford, Texas. True story. A Seattle man went to bed with nearly 300 grand in his bank account. By morning, the money had vanished because of some identity thief. Can you imagine? What if some thief got to your life savings? Look, no one can stop all identity theft, but here's what you do. Arm your bank and retirement accounts with LifeLock Ultimate Plus. Yep, LifeLock's best just got better. LifeLock Ultimate Plus is the most comprehensive identity theft protection available, helping protect your identity, your bank and retirement accounts, credit cards, even the equity in your home. How many other ID theft protection services do that? Zero. So why risk it? Get LifeLock Ultimate Plus and sleep easier knowing if a thief goes after your identity or life savings, LifeLock's on it. Visit LifeLock.com now and enter promo code AWARE or call and mention AWARE to save 10% on your LifeLock Ultimate Plus membership. 800-838-6010. 800-838-6010. 800-838-6010. Network does not cover all transactions. Ow! Stupid bugs! Ow. If pests are pestering you this summer, give Alley Cat Pest Control a call. A top performer in the pest control industry for over 25 years, offering the most comprehensive pest control services to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and surrounding counties. Alley Cat Pest Control is dedicated to providing a wide array of quality eradication 
services to apartment complexes, manufacturing facilities, food industry facilities, churches, and residential properties. Our technicians are trained specialists providing our clients with timely, effective pest control services from termite and bug detection and eradication, including removal of spiders, wasps, bees, ants, roaches, and even vermin. There's no pest too big or too small for Alley Cat Pest Control. Protect your investment and don't let termites destroy your home. Don't let bed bugs ruin a good night's sleep. Give us a call today, 817-469-4849. That's 817-469-4849. Or visit alleycatpestandtermite.com. From Wall Street to the Metroplex, this is 1160 AM KVCE, Dallas-Fort Worth's Business Authority. Welcome back to Believers in Business Bar Talk with Texas Board Certified Personal Injury Trial Lawyer, Brad Parker, right here on M 1160 KVCE. Have questions? Get answers. Call in at 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. You can check it out online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the Parker Law Firm. Welcome back. This is Brad Parker. You're listening to Bar Talk. Uh, you, before we left, I told you uh, we were going to talk about Jerry Jones a little bit. I uh, I had the pleasure, a good friend of mine invited me out to uh, the ballpark, uh, the Death Star, as many people refer to it, uh, Sunday night for the uh, Dallas Cowboy game. And I expected to see a shellacking put on the uh, Cowboys. But uh, much to my surprise, I was entertained. I uh, They actually had a good, solid game. And Really enjoyed it. Uh, 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 it's much different than what I thought. But then uh, Jerry's been entertaining us a lot lately. Uh, he's got this uh, lawsuit we've talked about a couple of different times, and uh, the thing just continues to fascinate me. Uh, I guess as a lawyer, and you look you look at it, and a lot of people don't understand it. Uh, what what the legal ramifications or, or wranglings are going on about it right now? But uh, you know, in essence, uh, a young woman is accusing him of sexual assault and uh, she did not file the lawsuit for approximately five years and 121 days uh, from the date that the assault occurred. And so the defense, Jerry Jones, uh, moved to, uh, you know, get the case thrown out in essence uh, based on statute of limitations. They, they've got a statute of limitations argument that they're trying to make uh, twofold. Uh, basically, one is that, uh, well, that, that it's just been too long. You can't do it. And then um, uh, what the plaintiffs are coming back, what this Miss Weckerly is claiming is that there's two exceptions that allow this lawsuit to be filed so long after the occurrence of the, of the bad conduct, the sexual assault. One of them is that because uh, she was under duress and intimidation, uh, by Jerry Jones in that uh, he was basically, as she alleges, threatening her. The I mean, Cowboys organization were threatening her. Uh, she was confused, young, uh, scared to death of a billionaire, uh, that they were trying to uh, tell her that if she went to the police about her allegations, they would destroy her, that, uh, that she would be in trouble, uh, that she took pictures illegally. I, I don't know what all the allegations are, but they, there's a laundry list of of different things in there. And so they're trying to argue that uh, they defendants, Jerry Jones and his group are what we call equitably is stopped. That is because of their conduct uh, that prevents them from raising the statute of limitation uh, issue. But, but for their conduct, she would have filed suit earlier. And because of their conduct, she should be allowed now to go forward with the lawsuit and they should be prohibited from arguing that it's too late. The other uh, defense, or I should say the, the other argument that the plaintiff has about filing the lawsuit late, which I, in my opinion uh, is a better one, is that the statute provides that if you are away from the state, if you are a Texas resident and you're away from the state, uh, you say you go up to um, the Super Bowl for two weeks. Uh, those two weeks that you're away from the state – uh, means that you've got two more weeks in which to file the lawsuit. So instead of just five years, you would have five years and two weeks. Uh, that's significant because 
this, as you heard me say a minute ago, this lawsuit was filed approximately 121 days past the five-year mark. And as such, the question becomes, at least in my mind, was Jerry Jones out of the state of Texas on business or, or personal pleasure for more than 121 days during that five-year period? And I got to believe the answer is absolutely he was. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, you know, a lot of us may have been out of the state uh, that that much. When you when you think about it, that is uh, about 20 days a year, or a little over, I guess maybe 25 days a year. And uh, when you're somebody like Jerry Jones, and you got jet aircraft, and you own a uh, a world-class football team, and you are the marketing and the general manager and uh, all, I guess, Papa Pizza's uh, uh, spokesperson, <laughs> you you uh, you travel a lot. So I suspect that we're going to find out that he's been out of the state in much more than just 121 days. Of course, the defendants are arguing that uh, that law doesn't apply, and there's a, there's a bunch of legal arguments going on uh back and forth, but what was kind of interesting is that uh, the McCatherine, uh, who is the lawyer for Jerry Jones, made an argument in court, or one of his statements in court supposedly was something to the effect of, Judge, this rule shouldn't apply to Mr. Jones because Jerry Jones is the most easily locatable person uh, there is. And the Jones, or the lawyer, or the judge responded back uh, to that comment of basically saying, Are you trying to indicate that because Mr. Jones is rich and powerful and high profile that somehow the law applies differently to him? And if you if you remember, this is the second time the lawyers for Jerry Jones have taken that approach. Judge, Mr. Jones is different. Uh, You should seal the pleadings. And and in fact, the pleadings got sealed uh, the first day out of the out of the shoot that they got filed. And the judge immediately lifted that, claiming that uh, Mr. Jones is just the same as Brad Parker or John Doe. The law applies to everyone equally. And uh, Judge Tillery should be applauded, uh, in my opinion. He's, he's uh, quite the statesman, and he's well-respected. And uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, process to, to find or, or to watch over the uh, the coming weeks and months and, and year. And that... that in fact, the case has already been set for trial. I looked at the docket sheet today. It's set for, I believe, next September uh, 2015. But the most interesting thing that has happened in the case over the last week is that the plaintiff, Ms. Weckerly, has now sued Jerry Jones's lawyer, Levi McCatherine, and basically alleged against Mr. McCatherine and his law firm that they Uh, participated in, if you will, a conspiracy to keep her quiet, that they uh, facilitated the payments and the threats and the coercion and the duress that I talked about a moment ago in preventing her from coming forward with the allegations that she had. And interestingly, that in in effect now makes it impossible for Mr. McCatherine to represent Jerry Jones. Uh, because he's also a party in the lawsuit, and allegations have been made against him. And in fact, when they had a hearing last week, uh, Mr. McCatherine appeared before himself, and it's my understanding that another lawyer has now come in and filed an appearance uh, on behalf of Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. What's also kind of interesting is that McCatherine has filed what we call a motion to dismiss, which is a, a, a... creature under Texas law, state law, that really didn't exist until 2011. And it's very rarely, if ever, used. It's very, very, very rarely used because if you lose the motion to dismiss or whoever does lose that motion gets stuck with the other side's attorney's fees. And so that's why you, you typically don't see these things filed because you have to show in the motion to dismiss that it's totally basis, baseless, both in law and in fact. And that's very, very difficult. I mean, everyone will disagree on what the facts are. But if the facts can be interpreted to support a claim under the law, then it's not baseless. Uh, even if the jury later comes back and says, no, we don't believe those facts, as long as there was a, a, a realistic, not realistic, but a, a just a tenable argument to support those facts, and those facts would support a cause of action, then you can't 
you, you will not per, prevail on your motion to dismiss. And so most defendants counsel that I've talked to and I work with are extremely reluctant to, to ever file anything like that because they've now exposed uh, themselves or their client to the other side's attorney's fees if they fail to prevail on the motion to dismiss. So that's, that's going to be really an interesting uh, procedural aspect when you're a law junkie like me. Uh, you kind of like to, to watch those things. But, uh, yeah, you know, when you're around the water cooler tomorrow talking to your friends about the Jerry Jones suit, maybe I've kind of imparted some knowledge to you that you can correct them and say, oh, no, no, no. Let me tell you about this statute of limitations issue. And it'll be interesting to see how the judge rules on this. Uh, there's some split authority across the state. I, I think the, the statute's very clear. I think the law is very clear. I think Jerry Jones is going to have a very difficult time uh, prevailing on this 121-day uh, issue that it somehow doesn't apply to him. Uh, I just don't see that happening. Uh, there has been a, a hearing scheduled for October 16th, at which time it's my understanding that, uh, if best I could tell, it's the motion to dismiss that will be ruled on at that time because there are no motions for summary judgment pending. And uh, that'll, that'll be an interesting, interesting thing to look at. And as I mentioned, uh, the trial has been set for September 28th of uh, 2015. So we'll have to see how that happens, see how all that goes. When we come back, i got to take a break now. Matt Broom is keeping me on time. I'm going to take a break. and I'm going to come back very quickly and let's talk about trucking. And maybe we'll slip in a little bit of Rick Perry if we have time. I'm Brad Parker. You're listening to Bar Talk, AM 1160 KVCE. This is 1160 AM, KVCE, Dallas-Fort Worth's Business Authority. Hey, KVCE listeners, mark your calendars for an evening with Ted Cruz and Sean Hannity. Saturday, October 18th at the Eisman Center in Richardson, featuring talk show hosts Mark Davis and John David Wells. Come and spend the evening with us as we talk about the issues facing our nation today. Tickets start at just $20. For tickets, go to kvceradio.com. Presented by Jeff Bolton, Vice President of Cascade Financial Management Incorporated, Tier 1 Gun Shows, Adairs, Fine Floors, etc., and Salem Communications. Hello, everybody, from Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. It's Notre Dame football. Hey, the number one game in the nation. Notre Dame football is back. Sacked by a great Notre Dame defense. Intercepted again. Finding a way. Breaks into open field. Inside the 10. He's heading to the goal line. For a touchdown, Notre Dame. The Irish return to reclaim college football's crown. Listen all season long on your home for Notre Dame football. Right here on AM 1160. See a full season schedule at kbceradio.com slash sports. Boss Academy Radio wants to give back to its listeners. For the first time in 10 years, Tony Robbins is coming back to Dallas to help you unleash the power within. Are you going to give up or move forward? Are you going to blame somebody or are you going to change something? Whatever you do is going to shape your destiny. Turn fear into power and transform everything from finances to your relationships to your health. This is not hyper-motivation, but a life-changing event hosted by a man who has helped transform and influence the lives of more than 8 million people worldwide. When registering to attend this powerful, life-changing four-day seminar, get your special Boss Academy discount. All you have to do is dial 858-535-6220 and tell them Boss Academy sent you. Unleash the power within, where the impossible becomes possible with Tony Robbins Live. October 23rd through the 26th at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center, 650 South Griffin Street in Dallas. Visit kvceradio.com or call today and mention Boss Academy, 858-535-6220. That's 858-535-6220. Mr. Ray Huffines for the 8 Area Huffines Auto Dealerships. 90 years ago, when my grandfather started Huffines, he had one simple business principle, and that is to treat customers the way they want to be treated. Today, this principle is still the foundation for everything we do at Huffines. Texas Values is something we take very seriously at Huffines. For 90 years, Huffines has proudly served North Texas with Texas Values, and we look forward to doing so for many more. 
So come celebrate 90 years of Texas values at the 8 Area Huffines dealerships with huge anniversary savings on every Huffine Chevrolet. Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Hyundai, Kia, Subaru, and worry-free certified pre-owned vehicle. And Huffines is honored that you, the consumer, have chosen Huffines as the best auto dealership group in the Metroplex now seven years running. For more information, visit us online at HuffHines.net. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. Hi, I'm Brad Parker. When I first got out of law school, I went to work for a big downtown Fort Worth law firm. It was a prestigious job, but I I never felt fulfilled professionally helping banks and companies. I didn't have that fulfillment that kind of drove me to be a lawyer to begin with. And the more I saw and learned, uh, the more I realized that maybe being in the big firm wasn't the right thing for me. I went out on my own to start doing some personal injury work and what we call insurance bad faith. Uh, because you get the opportunity to help real people. Your efforts and your success makes a difference in their lives. And that is very satisfying and very rewarding to me. And it drives me every, every morning when I wake up to be able to help people. The rewarding times after a case is settled, the cards I get from clients, just to say, thank you, you made a difference in my life. I never really got that from the CEOs of the banks that I represented. It is truly rewarding to know that you've made a difference in someone's life and you've really helped them principal office, Bedford, Texas. You're listening to 1160 AM KVCE. Welcome back to Bar Talk with Brad Parker. You can check it out online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the Parker Law Firm. Have questions? Get answers. Call in at 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. What'd you say? I won't pay. Rather play. Welcome back. I'm Brad Parker, and you're listening to Bar Talk. Before we left a moment ago, we were kind of giving you an update on the Jerry Jones uh, matter and uh, po- uh, kind of asked the question, the rhetorical question is, why has Texas seen a rise by 50, 51% since 2009 in trucking accident fatalities? Uh, I've talked about this on the show <clears throat> a few other times, but it just seems like it, it doesn't go away. I mean, every week we see another fatality of some sort unfortunately in the news and in my business i see it uh, all too often uh obviously the one that readily comes to mind are the poor young women uh who were run into by a trucker up on the oklahoma highway uh those women uh, came from north texas they attended college up in north texas area and uh, were on their way back from a softball game uh, scrimmage that they had participated in. And if you've been reading the news, <clears throat> you saw that a trucker uh, was going north on I-35, and he failed to negotiate a turn, went through the median. And if you've ever traveled that area up there uh, inside Oklahoma, the, the medians are extremely wide and uh, grass-covered. He goes all the way through the median, up onto the highway on the southbound side and runs into the side of this bus uh, killing three I think four ultimately seriously injuring uh, two and then continued on driving uh, for another several hundred feet uh, and fell off into the the ravine it police didn't even know where his truck was for over an hour according to the ports I read uh, that that tells me that that and and he wasn't hurt. Uh, that tells me that he was just sitting in his cab or didn't get out, didn't didn't go back to the scene uh, of this horrible, uh, horrible, terrible accident, a crash accident. It's a crash. Uh, did not go back to the scene. The police had to find him in his truck. Uh, the initial reports that I'm hearing uh, indicate that. There were no brake or skid marks that he did not take any evasive action. Uh, it's like he just drove it through over there. Of course, uh, you got to believe that he didn't do it intentionally. Uh, but but what is it when you jump into a, a, a eighty thousand pound vehicle and uh, are fatigued? He told the the police. Uh, I've seen a couple of different reports, but uh, one indicated that he was bending down to get something to drink. Oh, please give me a break. Uh, that That is just ridiculous. The experts that I talk to in the trucking industry say that's the 
That's the old tried and true, because nobody wants to admit they fell asleep while driving. Uh, they, they will go to great lengths. I represent a, a, a wonderful family whose uh, a daughter was killed in a, in a trucking accident uh, much the same way. The, the, the truck driver totally veered off into the uh, shoulder uh, of the highway, came completely off the highway, ran, ran over their car that was parked legally on the shoulder after breaking down, after having mechanical trouble, uh, killing her and her boyfriend. And his excuse, his excuse for how this could have happened uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning was that he was bending down trying to get his Sprite. And I, I'm sorry, that, that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, I suspect strongly that the, uh, the gentleman uh, fell asleep. Uh, he's overweight, he's, he's short in stature and overweight, and I suspect that when we get his medical records, we're going to see that he has sleep apnea. Uh, and that uh, there, all indications are going to be that that he slept. he never even touched his brakes in the case that I, I've got. Um, very similar, very similar to this case as well. These guys drive uh, uh, lots and lots of miles, and then and then what do you see in Tracy Morgan? Uh, you remember the Tracy Morgan uh, uh, episode where uh, he had finished up a, 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 a entertainment. Uh, uh, gig or venue and they were driving home he and some other folks uh, some other comedians in a uh, limousine bus uh, traffic had stopped i believe it was up in new jersey and a walmart truck driven by a sleep deprived driver slammed into the back of the bus killing uh, uh one of the occupants of the bus and uh, seriously injuring uh, tracy morgan who uh, may never be able to do a stand-up routine again he suffered some some significant uh, traumatic brain injuries as did two other of the people on the on the bus uh, and what you what you got here is Walmart filed a pleading the other day saying gosh if only you guys had been wearing your seat belts you wouldn't have gotten hurt are you kidding me what that is that the problem is that I hear that kind of excuse and that kind of nonsense and bull malarkey every single day in my cases. The 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 excuses and the finger pointing and the denial and the blame game that these corporations and, and insurance companies start to play when you have serious accidents is mind boggling. It's insulting. And uh, good for Tracy Morgan for coming out and, and, and bringing the record straight and, 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 you know, calling Walmart out on this. This is nothing but ridiculous. First of all, you don't have to wear a seatbelt. It's, it's not the law that you wear one uh, in, a, in, a, in a bus. And second of all, that's not what that caused the accident. What caused the accident was this sleep-deprived driver for Walmart who fell asleep and rammed into the back of it. For Walmart to insinuate otherwise is just despicable. Uh, but that's what they do, and that's what they do to you if you're ever in, seriously involved in another accident. I represent good, hardworking people who have been rear-ended in traffic just by someone else, by John Doe. And John Doe at the scene was apologizing and saying, I'm so sorry, it's all my fault. But by the time they get a lawyer involved, the other thing has become, it was a sudden emergency. John Doe had this sudden emergency and he couldn't stop in time. Or what they like to plead to is act of God. Are you kidding me? It was an act of God that you ran into the back of my car, putting me and my family in the hospital. Give me a break. Fortunately, juries don't don't believe that nonsense uh, uh, very often, and I, I don't know why defense attorneys and defendants and corporations and insurance companies continue to throw out that trash, because it is trash. And frankly, when they do that, I usually am able to make them regret it if I ever get it in front of a jury, because they look pretty silly saying a rear-end collision was an act of God. Uh if I sound a little animated, I guess I am because it just it just irritates me the extent to which, you know, put on a good defense. If you have a defense, a real one, let's put it on. But come up with this nonsense bull malarkey is it, just crazy. But what's causing all of these uh, uh, problems 
in Texas. You know, Texas has had a 51% increase. There was just a, a, a study put out by the Houston Chronicle and the Houston Public Media that found that from 2009 to 2013, the fatalities or uh, deaths caused by trucking commercial vehicles in Texas had risen by 51 percent from 352 in 2009 to over 530 in 2013. And I bet you folks, I, I'll bet you a dollar to a donut that we're going to see in 2014 that number will have continued to increase and climb by at least 10 percent. Mark my words. But what's causing this? It's not just the fact that there are more cars on the road. What's causing it for the state of Texas, and Texas is unique, quite frankly, because uh, we have so much oil and gas. Yeah, everywhere else in the country, trucking fatalities are on a decline, except in Texas, where they're on an increase. And that's largely due to the oil and gas boom that we were experiencing. And that's a good thing. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not critical of the boom. The problem is that you've got a industry that can't be served because there aren't enough commercial drivers, uh, qualified commercial drivers out there to for these companies to hire. And so they're having to take shortcuts. They hire people that they know are not qualified. They hire people who they know won't pass a drug screen. They hire people with questionable uh, physical uh, capabilities and limitations. Uh, if you have sleep apnea, you might not be a good truck driver. Uh, that's just a, a little observation there. And so you, you've got a problem in that you don't have enough truck drivers. Therefore, the industry is hiring folks who aren't qualified and who are also, if even if they are qualified, they're having to, to really stretch their hours out in order to complete and compete with other drivers uh, in trying to get the product picked up and delivered. And so all of this spells for, for a disaster in waiting. And then you put on top of that the workers themselves who are working 24 hours on uh, many times, and they're getting in their cars and, and trying to drive home as well. So you've got a, just a, a recipe for disaster on all of this. Uh, when, I, when I come back from the break here in just a minute, I want to talk a little bit about some things that could be implemented that if, if only it could get implemented. This industry is so strong in the legislature that it's hard to get anything done. But we'll talk about some of the things that could be done that maybe help stop this needless tragedies from occurring over and over, day in, day out. I'm Brad Parker. You're listening to Bar Talk, AM 1160, KBCE. Business Authority, 1160 AM, KVCE. Tune in Thursday evenings 5 to 6 as KVCE's Believers in Business presents the Family Law Hour with attorneys Frank Skipper and Donna Smith discussing divorce, child support, custody, mediation, adoption, and all other areas of family law. Both Frank and Donna focus their practices exclusively on family law. That's the Family Law Hour, tomorrow at 5, right here on AM 1160 KVCE and online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the David Wynn Law Firm and the law offices of Donna J. Smith. Got an IRA 401k or pension plan? I've got some really bad news for you. The IRS wants you to think these qualified plans are the best way to save for retirement. They give you a tax break when you contribute. Sounds good, right? Wrong. A qualified plan could be a tax disaster when you retire. With $17 trillion in debt, taxes are already going up. Imagine paying a tops tax rate of 94% like they did in the 1940s. There is a better way. It's an alternative the ultra-rich use that beats the pants off your IRA or 401k. It's been around for years. Your money grows tax-deferred, has no taxes during retirement, and no income taxes when you die. Plus, you can grow your money potential double digits with no risk of losing money when the market crashes. If the market tanks like 2008, you lose nothing. Call one 800 Hundred four three six nineteen nineteen 436 1919 now to talk to a specialist and get a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, to protect yourself from taxes and crashes. The next 37 who call get free shipping and handling, no credit card required. 1 800 436 1919. Again, that's 1 800 436 1919. So, where do you go to find the largest selection of cars, trucks, SUVs, pre owned, and certified pre owned? 
Is it a place to just look around, purchase, or lease with no hassle at all? Well, save yourself some time, relax, and enjoy the difference at Classic Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Mazda. So many consumers today have to go to at least five or six car lots on average just to find something they want to buy, and then they have to go to another three just to get the best deal or at least what they think is the best deal. At Classic Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Mazda, you can turn all of those stops into just one. Call 940-498-9800. That's 940-498-9800. And see why Kurt Chase, host of the Automotive Edge Radio Show, says Classic of Denton makes it all about the consumer. Make the short drive to I-35 and State School Road or go online 24-7 at ClassicOfDenton.com. Classic Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Mazda of Denton. Turn all of those stops into just one. Relax and enjoy the difference. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. Hi, I'm Brad Parker. When I first got out of law school, I went to work for a big downtown Fort Worth law firm. It was a prestigious job, but I I never felt fulfilled professionally helping banks and companies. I didn't have that fulfillment that kind of drove me to be a lawyer to begin with. And the more I saw and learned, uh, the more I realized that maybe being in the big firm wasn't the right thing for me. I went out on my own to start doing some personal injury work and what we call insurance bad faith. Uh, because you get the opportunity to help real people. Your efforts and your success makes a difference in their lives. And that is very satisfying and very rewarding to me. And it drives me every, every morning when I wake up to be able to help people. The rewarding times after a case is settled, the cards I get from clients, just to say, thank you, you made a difference in my life. I never really got that from the CEOs of the banks that I represented. It is truly rewarding to know that you've made a difference in someone's life and you've really helped them principal office, Bedford, Texas. Want to play golf with a legend? Tuesday, October 14th at the Nancy Lieberman Foundation Celebrity Golf Classic at Prestonwood Country Club in Plano. Join me and legendary golfer Annika Sorenstam. We're going to raise money for kids in the Metroplex. To play or sponsor, call 972-473-2121 or go to nancylliebermanfoundation.org. From Wall Street to the Metroplex, this is 1160 AM KVCE. Welcome back to Believers in Business Bar Talk with Texas Board Certified Personal Injury Trial Lawyer, Brad Parker, right here on M 1160 KVCE. Have questions? Get answers. Call in at 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. You can check it out online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the Parker Law Firm. You know, I was listening to that uh, little break about when I first started practicing and getting the notes from clients and things. Uh, that, that is so true. Uh, I, I couldn't do this job. I guess maybe why I sound so animated sometimes is I, my heart is truly in it. It is it's something I've always wanted to do is practice law. And I sincerely uh, enjoy helping families whose lives have been destroyed or severely impaired because of the negligence or, frankly, let's call it what it is, stupidity of uh, other people. And uh, when I can do that, that brings so much satisfaction. And and holding trucking companies accountable uh, for allowing their drivers to uh, traverse the highways when they know they shouldn't uh, brings great satisfaction. Uh, You know, whether it's a a trucking company, a commercial uh, vehicle, uh, or just John Doe that slams into you. I, I recently represented a young woman who uh, had been severely injured when she was broadsided at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, get this. 3 o'clock in the afternoon by a drunk driver on a Saturday. And when we started going back and checking on things, we see that this drunk driver had had 20 shots of liquor over a four-hour period, and the bar manager was drinking with him. Now, it's those kinds of situations that uh, I really enjoy holding those who are responsible, accountable, and being able to uh, obtain a a financial stability for my client uh, to help them with the long, if not lifelong, uh, recovery process that that they'll endure. So what do we do uh, about these truckers that are on the the highways? Um, You know, uh, Ted Houghton, who is the... Uh, commissioner 
for the transportation or the uh, chairman of the transportation commission uh, recently came out and said all oh, these these truck wrecks break his heart and so we've got to find a way to to prevent them and and you know with all due respect to mr chairman uh, houghton uh, he says so what we're going to do is fix the roads we need more more money to fix the roads and i i'm reading this 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 press release and this article about it and i'm thinking are you kidding me your your idea of preventing uh, fatigued drivers, unqualified drivers, uh, overworked drivers, bad equipment, uh, uh, faulty trucks. The, the, Texas is one of the highest states that, that puts vehicles out of service because they can't even pass a simple inspection when they're pulled over on the side of the freeway. Your answer to that is to fix the roadways? Well, yeah, I guess it'd be nice to have some of the road's potholes fixed, but that's not the problem, Commissioner. Uh, the problem is uh, the, the industry. You've got uh, two ways that, that basically pro, uh, shipments are made in this country. One is through trains, and the other one's through trucking. And while trains are pretty much owned by a large group of small or a small group of uh, large trains, uh, the trucking industry is full of riffraff. There are some very good, competent companies, but there is a ton of riffraff out there. And one of the things that the riffraff don't have to do is carry a lot of insurance. So when when the 80,000-pound vehicle slams into the back of your mother-in-law's car, either killing her or giving her a lifelong traumatic brain injury that she'll never recover from, uh, guess what? There's a million dollars there, if that uh, assuming they've got the insurance. And a lot of these companies are fly-by-nighters. I represent uh, a young man who was killed very much similar to the way the Oklahoma crash happened. A truck runs off the freeway and crosses the median and into the oncoming lane of traffic, hits this uh, car that my client was driving in uh, and another young man who happened to be married and had a family. And so you have two young men who were killed, one with a family, one with a million dollars. A million dollars is what they've got. And you're supposed to compensate uh, the loved ones of that uh, for a million dollars? Are you kidding me? That, that, that's impossible to do. And what, what does that do to the trucking company? Nothing. Nothing. These people aren't being held. The, the policy was as cheap as they could get it. The insurance company will pay it, and the trucking company will either go away and, and come back under a different uh, ID number or a different uh, entity, or they'll just continue to operate and never really fix themselves. Uh, you'll hear stories all the time of trucking companies who have been shut down by the, the government for their sloppiness and their continued uh, violations of the Federal Motor Carrier Act. Uh, yet they're still running trucks. They're still uh, harming and maiming people, and you can't hold them responsible. What we need is not better roads to address this situation. What we need is tighter regulation on who can drive a truck, when they can drive a truck, and require the trucking companies to be adequately and fully insured. A million dollars is not enough. Uh, you've got uh, in, in trucking accidents... Of all the trucking accidents, 73% of those killed will be the occupants of cars compared to only 18% the truckers themselves versus 10% pedestrians or, or, or cyclists. So you have roughly 83% of the innocent traveling public that will be killed by this truck if there's a wreck. Uh, so those those are huge statistics, and you and you you injure and maim and kill uh, uh, a young girl who had her whole life ahead of her uh, coming back from a, ba a baseball game. My God, what I cannot imagine a more horrible call to get than something like that. Uh, we got to hold the trucking companies accountable. We've got to hold uh, the industry accountable. And until we do, uh, you know, paving roads isn't going isn't gonna to get the job done. Uh, you know, if you if you or a loved one are ever hurt or injured in one of these kinds of accidents, you, you've got to get counsel immediately. Uh, these these trucking companies come out to the scene at the time of the accident and they start making up their defenses right then and there. 
wasn't wearing his seatbelt, and that's why he got injured, Tracy Morgan. Give me a break. Well, listen, I'm running out of time. Matt's telling me i got to get off. This has been great talking with you this evening. I hope that you'll tune back in next week for Bar Talk. And I want to remind you that uh, tomorrow night you got Frank and Donna that are going to do the Family Law Hour. And I hope you stay tuned after my show. The Bloomberg News Hour comes up next. Uh, again, call me, 817-503-9200. I'm Brad Parker. This has been Bar Talk. I'm the attorney you want, but I hope you never need me. Good night.